While all the Game of Thrones maniacs out there have been gearing up for a new season, we've been working hard with cosplaying chemistry fanatic Ryan Consul to unlock the scientific secrets of the most sought after alloy in Westeros, Valyrian Steel. When it comes to next level swords, Valyrian Steel is the lightest, sharpest, hardest knocking slaughterhouse blade that any fanboy or fangirl could have ever dreamed up. Legend says it's the magic spells and dragon fire that made this steel so great, but is it possible to legitimately forge such a powerhouse metal with real life materials? Well, in order to know about magic steel, we first need to know about real steel. Steel is an alloy, a combination of a metal with one or more other elements. Steel is mostly iron, but it has some other ingredients, including a mandatory amount of carbon, up to about 2%. Even a small change in the quantity of material in an alloy can dramatically change the properties of the end material. The characteristics of Valyrian steel can give us a lot of clues as to its composition. This super material is described as being incredibly sharp, light, strong, super heat resistant, and dark in color with very distinct ripple patterns. Strength and sharpness is going to require a bit of a fancy balancing act. In order to hold an edge, a blade has to be really hard, which is no problem for a high carbon steel. The problem is, the harder something is, the easier it will shatter, which is no good for a Kingslayer. Valyrian steel would have to be tough, it's got to take a hit. For these reasons, I might recommend a spring steel, maybe something with 0.6% carbon and a couple percent silicon and manganese. This would provide a nice balance of properties. It would hold an edge, bend without breaking, and be really hard to shatter. So then what about Valyrian steel's specialty of handling extreme heat? A spring steel sword isn't going to cut it against high temperatures, but check it out. Lots of different industrial steels need to be able to be heated and cooled while maintaining their structural integrity. For this reason, there's a class of steel that is cooled off in the open air when forged and won't lose its killer properties if heated up. Air hardened steel requires this complex cocktail of elements, and you better believe it would require magic in the medieval world to get these materials working together. So what do you think about that, Ryan? Well, it's a good guess, but Valyrian steel's color, pattern, and weight make it pretty unlikely. Steel can always be polished to a bright gray, but Valyrian steel is supposed to be nearly black. No matter the mix, steel's pretty much always the same color. On top of that, you can't really change the weight of steel. It's mostly iron, and iron's heavy. Valyrian steel is supposed to be quite light. Also, the ripple patterns of Valyrian steel suggest that it's been pattern welded or folded. This isn't a sign of superb quality and strength, it's actually a way of compensating for poor materials and trying to make a good steel out of two bad ones. Also, if the folding's done correctly, you don't have visible ripples, so that's kinda out. Does that mean that Valyrian steel isn't steel at all? Maybe. The best possible match might be a metal matrix composite. This is a modern super material that has a metallic framework embedded with ceramics. One of these could provide all of the extreme characteristics needed for Valyrian steel. Titanium silicon carbide composite might be the perfect fit. It has the strengths, weight, and color needed for Valyrian steel, and if the matrix wasn't perfectly consistent, it might have swirls of gray running through the blade. Now these materials are extremely hard to produce and require some serious modern equipment to make. Needless to say, the Valyrians were probably using magic. <laughs> 